What's up? My name is Kamal and today I'm going to be changing the spark plugs on my 2013 Mazda Speed 3. Uh, my Mazda Speed 3 is completely stock so uh, you know we have to take off this uh, plastic cover and the intercooler and that's about it. It's really not that difficult of a job to do uh, so I'll just show you guys how to get that done and then um, with the fact that my Mazda Speed 3 is bone stock basically besides um, I just upgraded the motor mounts to more solid motor mounts uh, I'm just gonna be running the stock plugs from Mazda so I just got these from my local Mazda dealership uh, looks like this is the part number here and then you can also see the uh, part number here as well and then you can see uh, Spark plugs, when you open them, they always have this like cardboard cover on them. And that's basically if it gets dropped or anything during shipping on this side, the uh, ground electrode won't, you know, move at all and change the gap between the ground electrode and the center electrode. So, uh, and as far as like how often you should change the spark plugs, um, I recommend doing it every 25,000 miles for like naturally aspirated engines. You usually do it every 100,000, but if your car is boosted, you have a turbo or supercharger, then that interval is going to, you know, shorten quite a bit. So, um, again, with the fact that mine is stock, I do it every 25. If you have like a Cobb access port and you're running higher boost or something, you might want to do it even shorter than that. Um, I'm sure that Cobb actually has like documents or forms that with the recommendations about that. And then uh, I was actually going to just check the gap because I was curious what the stock gap was on these, which it's uh, looks like it's pretty small, like 0 0.025. I might actually just check all of them just for the heck of it. This last one here. Uh, so I just checked all the gaps on all the plugs and they were all right around 0 0.025 inches. Um, and to be honest, I don't even know what they should be, but since they're all close and I'm just running the stock plugs, it's not a big deal. But I was just kind of curious what they would be and that's why I checked them. If anybody knows like what they should be, you can just leave a comment so everybody knows. So uh, I'm gonna probably just like strap the GoPro to my head while showing y'all how to do this. Um, it's also a good idea not to change your spark plugs on a cold engine or like a really hot engine. So, you know, if you've been driving it, that's good before you change your plugs. Basically the reason for that is you can damage the threads in the cylinder head like I said, if the engine's too cold or too hot. So just, uh, if you were just been driving it, then that's good. If not, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea to just run the car for like five to 10 minutes or just go on a short drive real quick. So the first thing we have to do is remove these uh, 10 millimeter bolts. And then uh, this cover will come right off. So you just lift the cover up at the front and you kind of push it back and it comes off. And as you can see under here, there's a small metal tab and that hooks on right here. So just don't pull up because you don't want to break this or anything. And then every time I take that cover off, I always just grab my uh, vacuum and just get all the leaves and stuff that accumulate in here that get through the hood scoop. Yeah, just be careful when you do that because you can see like the fins on here. You don't want to damage them. You can tell that a lot of these are kind of bent a little bit. That's just from rocks that happen to find their way in here and just kind of hit it, the fins kind of hard. So the next thing we can do is uh, just use some pliers and get this uh, clamp off here off the diverter valve. So you just kind of squeeze this and move it back this 
move it back out of the way. And then you can just pull that off. I'm going to set that aside here. And then we also have one more uh, right down here that you also have to take off. And just when you're taking these off, just like kind of just make a, a mental note of where they were, which it's not like a huge deal because you'll even just be able to see the marks of where it was so that going back on is not that difficult. hard to see but just uh, push that one off of the diver valve and you can just kind of set it underneath there so the next thing we have our intercooler pipes one here and then one here and uh, I know it might be hard to tell but I actually like marked it with a sharpie just so I had like a reference I kind of just marked this one along lined up with where the the nut is here for the clamp because when it comes to these intercooler clamps or any type of hose clamp where you like screw it down tight um it's kind of hard to gauge how tight you're really getting it because you don't want to tighten these down too much because then you know these clamps are kind of sharp on the edges and they can start tearing the rubber and wear it faster than it would so I'm actually surprised you can still see the Sharpie mark from the last time I did the spark plugs 25,000 miles ago, but yeah, it's not a bad idea to just mark that one. This one's not as visible, so I might just mark it one more time before uh, taking these off. So I'm just marking one of the teeth of the clamp, basically. The one that's kind of just like in line with the, the edge of the bolt so that when I go back on, I can just line it back up and know it was in the same place it was before I took it off. Let's see what size these are. These are also uh, 10 millimeters, so. Just gonna loosen these up now. So after we get those loose, uh, looks like these are bigger than a 10. So these nuts that hold the intercooler down itself are a 12 millimeter. So we're just going to loosen these now. And uh, I know it might be hard to tell, but I remember last time I took this off, um, it has these like rubber grommets on here, as you can see. And uh, there's some underneath as well. So when you're pulling this up, just kind of just be aware of that. So if the, if the one squished underneath here does drop, you at least know where it went and can retrieve it. I think there was only uh, three of these. Last one's just back here. So now uh, you can see how it's loose now. So the only thing really holding it on is the intercooler pipes, which uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get this one off first. It's 
since these are uh, not something you take off often, they uh, be a little snug. So. So we got this off, uh, let's see, underneath here. So, so this is one of the pieces that just fell out here. We can see how there's rubber on this side, and then this goes on, then the bolt goes on over that. And there's rubber on the bottom as well. So, you can see this like washer stayed on here. Let's see. So you can see the washers for this one stayed here and this one stayed on here as well. So it's not a bad idea to just keep those on there. And I'm going to put this one uh, back on here as well. All right, so the next thing we have is our ignition coils. I'm actually surprised there's not a whole lot of crud down here. You can also use your vacuum and get any leaves or acorns or anything that found their way onto the top of the valve cover. So uh, yeah, just unplug the coils, which pretty simple. Just push down on this and pull the connector off. And luckily they're all in a position where you can't really mix them up. I think these are like a eight millimeter. Yeah. So the nut that holds on your coils is eight millimeter. And uh, just the, something I do is I always put the ignition coils back in the same location that I take them out just because it's a good way for diagnosing if you have a misfire or coil I mean if nothing's ever happened then it's not a big deal but so you just basically just pull these up and they come on out so I just always like to set these in order and So now you can uh, see the old plugs in there and everything looks clean, which is good. So uh, as far as like the plugs, uh, it's just a standard spark plug socket, 5 8 spark plug socket. It's what you use to get these off. And um, I have like a wobble locking extension, which is nice, but not really needed for these because they're literally just like straight down. So you can see them. So here's the first one, and uh, it's not like terrible. You can uh, see the difference, which they uh, look pretty clean. I mean, there's like charts you can look at that show you all different types of colors and stuff on the spark plug and the insulation, the ground electrode, center electrode. They basically explain if you have like an issue. Um, but I mean, I've never had an issue with this car really. It's been really reliable. So let's just make sure uh, all of these look the same. So also uh, 
something I wanted to mention is whether or not to put um, anti-seize like grease on the plugs when you uh, see it? this one looks the same as the other one pretty much. Um, I've never done that with uh, any of the cars I've worked on. Um, some people say like you should always use NICs or some type of grease to do that. But as you guys can see, I'm breaking these loose and taking them out by hand. What I've like kind of noticed is that if people use NICs grease all the time on every single time they do plugs or stuff like that, like when that stuff gets super hot, because it's obviously gonna get super hot, these plugs are in the engine, it almost makes it harder to take the plugs out. It like almost creates like a coating on the threads, either in the cylinder head or on the plugs. See, like I break it loose. It's really just like two turns and I'm able to get this with my fingers. So, you know, the car has 75,000 miles. I've never used that stuff. And as you can see, the plugs are coming out with no issue. They all have the same wear. So if you, uh, if you want to use that stuff, go ahead. Um, I guess everybody will have like different results when it comes to that, but that's just my, uh, my take on it. Just never really used it. So to look down in there and it's always cool to kind of check it out. So uh, now we're going to go in with the new plugs. Um, I like to just get them all out, uh, all at the same time. It's only four. So that way, since I'm taking them all out one after the other, I can feel how all of them feel and make sure none of them feel weird or like they weren't in there properly. So uh, just when you put this in the socket, just make sure it's down in there well, because when you go to like tip this, you really don't want this to fall out. Like I was explaining earlier with the cardboard, cardboard. Uh, you just don't want this to be dropped on the ground electrode and change the gap at all. So just uh, be careful. And uh, yeah, just set it in there lightly. Always just uh, get these hand tight. And now for the tightening torque, which uh, I remember the last time I did this, I had uh, access to all data and it said it was 14 Newton meters. And honestly, I think I went to like 19 or 20 just because 14 just didn't feel tight at all. So it's like 14 Newton meters max or 10 foot pounds max. So I'm just gonna show y'all what this looks like because so you guys can see that's 14 I like it's really not tight at all and uh, so that was 20 just barely you know I'm just like using two fingers to tighten these down so that's uh, 20 foot pounds um, that's what I did last time it's like 1920 that's kind of what I feel comfortable with the whole point is just don't go ham on these and strip anything so as I said just make sure the plugs in there good so it doesn't drop out and damage the ground electrode just start tightening this by hand all the way down you know, you don't have any issues. Squeaky, squeaky. And the torque. So, we'll have this like 90 degrees equivalent with the engine. It's just hand tight. See that? It's like barely anything gets you to the 14 Newton meters. So, so you guys can see, here's 20. I don't know. I just feel like 
See, so, yeah, I went to like 21 on that one. It just feels a little, a little better going to the 20 newton meters. But if you guys want to just go to the 14, by all means, go ahead. 14 or 10 foot pounds. But I just like, feel like they're a little more snug. Just 14, keep going to 20. It's really not a whole lot more. So another thing when it comes to plugs, because um, since my Mazda Speed is stock, you know, I can run the stock plugs with no issues. But if you have like a Cobb access port and some modifications and you're running a tune with maybe possibly higher boost, then you might want to consider going to uh, like a one step colder plug. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of different aftermarket ones. Uh, even if you contact Cobb themselves, they might have suggestion, suggestions on which plugs to use based on which tune you have. But if uh, the whole idea is just to prevent any issues with misfiring, if you're uh, running, you know, like I said, more boost. So that's pretty much it. Now we just go back together with everything. And when this is off, I always just like to look around because with this car, you know, the intercooler does cover a lot of this stuff under here, so it's not a bad idea to just check everything out, like make sure nothing's really leaking or anything. So when you're putting these back on, you can see like there's this little edge here that kind of sits over this edge in here. And then also, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I always just put these in the same location that I took them out. And there's one. down just hand tight don't need to go like crazy on them let's see That's that. Now we can uh, plug our ignition coils in. As you can see like these clamps kind of uh if you don't really push on them or mess with them too much they'll stay in the location they were which is kind of what you want so now 
when we're going back on with this, you can see these rubber grommets, the, the silver part here that pushes through, see how it pushes through the one underneath here? So that kind of like helps hold them on. I got lucky this time and none of them fell on me. Last time I had, I think this one on the bottom left kind of fell and I was able to get it. So I got lucky, but just uh, like I said, just kind of watch out for that. tricky but just make sure I don't lose any of the grommets. Might be useful to use a screwdriver or something to kind of help it get over that edge there. You can kind of lift these up and kind of squeeze them to make sure everything's uh, the way it was. Kind of just, yeah, when you push it down, you can see like set all the way in and same with this one. This one's set all the way in as well. All right. So now we can, uh, Put these 12 millimeters back on. And then lastly, uh, you can just tighten the clamps that hold the intercooler piping on. And then I always just, you can look at the back side of it here, just make sure it's uh, sitting all the way on there. And you can uh, kind of just push on the, push up on the pipe just to make sure it's seated all the way up against the lip on the intercooler itself. And then these, uh, these were a 10 millimeter. So yeah, just, uh, Sure it's pressed all the way on there. And we can start tightening this down. And then you can see the uh, the black mark from the Sharpie that I put. So, uh, like I said, I kind of just have mine so it's, it's kind of level with the outside of the gear, so. That's just about right. It's good. That's the thing, is just the feel when you tighten these down. It just can be so different. That's why I like to mark it so I can just make sure. Got it back in the same place. All right, and that's it for that. All right, so now, um, I know it's hard to see, but we have the, uh, the pipe down here for the diverter valve that we just gotta get back on. I don't 
think I'm gonna be able to have it so you guys can see this, but. And another thing is this was like, see this is, when I put the intercooler on, this hose was tucked under here. You can actually bring this one back up around. Kind of just sits right here on top of the diverter valve. So, just got this hose back up here and you can see like there's this little, uh, there's these little plastic pieces that stick out so you can just make sure it's flush up against those. And then we'll just use our pliers to get this back where it was and uh, I don't know if you guys can see that on camera but you can actually see like where the clamp was on the hose just because of how it sits on there all the time. So I just uh, get it close and kind of just keep messing with it till it looks like it's in the spot that it originally was. So. It's right about where it used to be, so that's good. You can always look uh, underneath here too, just to make sure it's not super cockeyed or anything. It looks good to me. And then now just this little uh, hose that goes on here. That one's pretty simple to see where it was originally. And then the last thing to do is just uh, put the put this engine cover back on. So like I was explaining earlier, just like hook this piece to the back here. And then uh, but you can kind of look underneath. And, and you'll see these line up and if you, you can try to pull up back here and you can tell here that it's underneath that piece that it needs to be. And uh, just get these last 10 millimeters in here. And now obviously the last thing to do is start it up. See, it started right up and uh, the idle is nice and smooth, so that's how you can know that everything was done properly. So we just started up, uh, ran smooth, idled smooth. Obviously you can go drive it and make sure you don't have any issues or anything. But if you do it like that, then you shouldn't, uh, unless something's wrong with one of the plugs by chance. Uh, but please like the video and subscribe to my channel if this was helpful. It helps me out a lot. And uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful to any of you uh, guys and girls out there trying to change out your spark plugs on the Mazda Speed 3. Um, you know, I haven't really done a lot to this car. All I've done is uh, motor mounts, like I said earlier, and then normal maintenance like this, spark plugs, oil changes, and air filters. So um, I'm mainly focusing on the 350Z right now. I've got a ton of stuff I can do to that and parts I have. So once I uh, mod that thing out, then I'll probably do some more stuff to the Speed 3. So stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.